Hi, everyone, and welcome to Marketplace's new series, Decoding Democracy. I'm Lily Dramali. On this show, we're going to be discussing the myths and disinformation that can feel like it's kind of everywhere this election season. And we're going to be looking at how advances in technology are only making that material harder to spot. On this series, I'll be joined by experts and researchers, as well as my own Marketplace colleagues who have their own insights into all of this. Speaking of which, our guest today is senior correspondent Kimberly Adams. Hey, Kimberly, thanks for joining me. Hey, Lily. Happy Super Tuesday. Happy Super Tuesday. Back at you. Ready for our first episode? So ready. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Well, coming up on this episode, we're going to be couple things. We're doing a couple things. We're going to first share tips on how to spot deep fakes. Also, we're going to be touching on something you have a bit of experience with, Kimberly. How do you talk about all of this, spotting myths and disinformation with your family? Right. And we're going to be um, looking at whether people, including ourselves, can spot deep fakes when we see one. There's a quiz, so stick around for that, folks. It's getting harder and harder. It is getting harder and harder. All right. Well, Kimberly, being based in Washington as you are, you are so very immersed in this issue. So make the case. Why should we all be paying attention to this right now? Well, first of all, we're paying attention because it's everywhere now. I mean, the rise in generative AI has made the tools that allow for deep fakes that can be used in mis- and disinformation to be much more widely available, much more easily accessible, and much more realistic than in the past. And policymakers are paying attention to this, and people are already starting to see this show up in the campaign. We very famously saw that Biden... Joe Biden robocall that was actually a deep fake in New Hampshire back in January. And most experts are saying that's just the beginning of what's coming. Yeah. And we actually have a really great example of one Kimberly Adams uh, with a deep fake in 2022 um, that was, uh, let's say, a little bit more conspicuous than one might find today. Um, tell us about what you brought with you. Right. We were researching deep fakes and audio deep fakes back in 2022 and actually got a company to create a deep fake of my voice using some audio that we had available. And you should listen to it. And it will be very interesting to hear that versus what we can do now. From American Public Media, this is Marketplace Tech. I'm Kimberly Adams. You sound so like a robot. <laughs> I sound like a robot and a grainy, it's grainy. It's, it's doesn't, it doesn't sound like me. Right. But this was back in 2022, not that long ago. Let's listen now to what you can do with a tool you can get for like $5 a month online that anybody can use. From American public media, this is Marketplace Tech. I'm Kimberly Adams. Wow. That is actually incredibly convincing, scarily so. Yeah, I mean, the technology has just gotten so much better so quickly. And if that's what they can do with my voice, you can imagine what someone can do with the voice of a public figure that has so much audio of them available, and especially in the hands of bad actors who might want to make it sound like someone has said something that they didn't say. Or even if somebody says that, if even if somebody says something that maybe they don't want to admit they said, then they can <laughs> claim it's a deep fake and it gets yeah. to be the circular problem. Indeed. All right. Well, so much to dig into. The most notorious audio deepfake of this election season so far, you mentioned it. It was that uh, deepfake robocall meant to sound like President Biden. It went to thousands of voters just ahead of the New Hampshire primary in January, and it seemed intended to uh, keep voters at home uh, and to convince them not to go to the polls. Let's listen. It's important that you save your vote for the November election. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. There was even a mention, they used the term malarkey. What a bunch of malarkey in that call um, at one point. And um, I, I honestly, it sounds a lot like the real Joe Biden. 
It does. And so I think that's a really good point in that the technology is so good now, we can't rely on whether it sounds real anymore. And this is something that is really of concern to election officials. I covered a summit a few weeks ago here in the D.C. area of local and state election officials from all over the country and they are very worried about this. And they're trying to get the word out now that if people are looking for information about their polling place or voting dates or voting times, that they need to be going to their local election officials, not necessarily relying on a robocall or what they find online. Yeah. Uh, it's been interesting to see how incredibly vocal and mm. public officials have been about the response to that Joe Biden deep fake. Um, the New Hampshire Attorney General said that this was traced to a telemarketing company in Texas. There's a probe. The FCC ruled last month robocalls using voices generated by A are illegal. That came, you know, very shortly after this this robocall deep fake. Um, criminal charges, even potentially on the table. But now there's um, a political consultant associated with the Dean Phillips campaign who says this is what he said. He said he. Planned, this is from NBC News, by the way, they made the connection that it was this guy potentially. He said he planned the fake robocall from the start as an act of civil disobedience to call attention to the dangers of AI in politics. It kind of feels like we have officially entered bizarro world. I don't even know what's real and what's fake anymore, even with the explanation for what happened here. Well, what's real is the risk. And this is something that election security officials have been warning about for years, even before this technology was available, that it was going to be relatively easy to mislead voters with just a well-placed call or a well-placed piece of misinformation. And especially given how good these tools are now, we're, we're seeing it and it's going to be an increasing risk. Yeah. And it's incredible. I mean, to your point about how fast this technology is advancing, you can have a real time conversation with, you know, a fake thing, a synthetic audio, something um, that is completely viable at this point with the technology that we have. And the other point I, I find very striking is, you know, th this in, in the Biden um, deep fake example in New Hampshire, the system worked, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we found out about it. Um, we reported about it. The news media spread the information about what had happened. Um, right. But what happens when, you know, this audio gets to the point where it can scale to lots of local elections? There, I think there's a much more pronounced uh, opportunity for harm. And those local races are so important in the lives of everyday Americans and could be the next frontier for this. So something to watch out for. So to that point, how can Americans recognize this AI-generated material? That's a question we've been thinking about a lot here at Marketplace Tech. And we've been speaking to experts about this, including Hani Farid. He is a con computer science professor over at UC Berkeley. He specializes in the area of digital forensics and misinformation. And we asked, you know, what happens if you get a cold call yourself that's related to the election, something akin to that Biden robocall um, that might be telling you what to do or not to do in some cases? Here's what he told us. First thing to do when that happens is to either pick up the phone or get online and check to see if this is true. Because, look, if somebody calls and says, my election station has been powered out, first thing I'm going to do is call that election station to so understand that people are going to try to manipulate our election, whether that's individuals, whether that's organizations, whether that's state-sponsored actors, and you have to protect your right to vote. Um, and that's on you. And that is not fundamentally an AI problem because there's lots of ways we can get manipulated from phone calls, from emails, from text messages, from social media, and we have to be prepared for that. Bottom line, it sounds like the message is first and foremost, do your homework. Right. And that's tough because it means that the labor is on the individual voter mm -hmm. because you really cannot rely on the systems that are in place to protect you against this at this point. And that's why, as I was mentioning earlier, you have these election officials trying to get the message out early, spending millions of dollars in jurisdictions all over the country for PSAs and, and public ad campaigns to try to let people know not only you know where their polling places are and what they need to do to vote, but also to try to get ahead of some misinformation like no, your voting machines are not connected to the internet and no, you're not going to hear about 
you know, some secret effort to move ballot boxes, because even though we're talking about audio deep fakes, we have the potential for video deep fakes, as well as manipulated photos, or even just people taking real audio, but telling a false story around it. If you operate mm-hmm. from the assumption that there will be actors out there trying to interfere in the election and trying to manipulate people, that's probably a safer stance to take. Yeah. And on the tech side of this, you know, in terms of what these audio deep fakes sound like, you know, a couple things to think about. They tend to be more flat in tone. Uh, mm-hmm. The volume doesn't always fluctuate as much as it might in real speech as much and as also your melodious voice <laughs> right and look for well thank you and look for um is the pronunciation perhaps too good mm. um because we don't always use perfect pronunciation if it sounds too pitch perfect the pronunciation is flawless that might be a red flag as well i mean we just want tips right on what to do but here's a bit of a reality check um also coming from professor farid at berkeley I would very much like to give your listeners tips, but I can't. And here's why. Whatever I tell you right now, in three months, it will be useless. We notice that the cadence of AI-generated speech is highly regular as compared to natural speech. We notice that the volume doesn't change very much across the speech. But in three months, that won't be true. Just a little bit of common sense goes an awful long way. Stop worrying about whether it's AI or not and start thinking about what is being said. <laughs> and that's so important. And Kimberly, um, you know, one of the things that you have done is had conversations with your family members um, to sort of position things, set the table for when this might be an issue. Um, we, literally us about that. At, we literally did this at the dinner table at Thanksgiving. I told my family, I said, look, there's a lot of audio of me out there on the internet, but I will not be calling you with an emergency asking for money. And so if you get a call like that, if most likely not me. And so one of the things that I encourage my own family to do uh, with me as well as with uh, their other family members is to have a safe word, something that, you know, you can use as a verification if you get a mysterious call that you think might be a deep fake or that just seems a little bit suspicious because there are a lot of scams out there that have cost people tens of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars where people think they're helping out a family member or doing following instructions from their boss or from a client and they end up you know falling prey to some of these deep fake audio scams that are getting increasingly sophisticated so something as simple as yes as dr farid just said think about what's being said. Is Mm -hmm. it coming from the source that you've pre-identified as reliable? Is it coming from your local election official? Or is it coming out of nowhere? Is it coming from a group you've never heard of? But also, you know, have your own methods of verification. If you think it's a family member, but you're suspicious, ask for your code word or whatever Mm -hmm. challenge questions you, you have. If you are suspicious about whether or not it's really your county election official, you know, make sure you have the correct website ready so that you know where to go and double check so that you're not just following blind information. That's right. Really great advice. Thanks, Kimberly. Well, um, let me ask you this. Do you think you can spot an audio deep fake? I don't know. It's been getting so good lately. I I really don't trust my own ears sometimes anymore. (laughs) Well, we're going to put ourselves to the test and uh, audience members can join in the fun. This is a segment we're calling Real or Fake. Our producer, Daniel Shin, is going to play three examples of audio clips with some of our colleagues. Some of them are real. Some of them are deep fakes. um, And we are going to have to figure out what's what. Um, And the voice that you're going to be hearing on these, by the way, is our dear colleague, Stephanie Hughes. Is it the real (laughs) Stephanie or AI Stephanie? Shall we try uh, our first clip? Hey, it's Stephanie. Please give me a call back when you can. Thanks. That sounds real to me. Oh, no, I don't think that's real. That sounds a little <laughs> too stiff. Stephanie's way more chill than that. I think it's fake. Too fast? The pacing was too quick? I think so. I'm going to stick with real. Okay, who's right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I just saw her a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well clearly yeah, I'm bad at this. And if folks haven't figured this out yet, we haven't heard these before. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, 
Well, one point for Jamali's team. Uh, Adam, <laughs> you can redeem yourself on clip number two. Here we go. Hey, it's me, Stephanie. Need to chat about something related to next week's Marketplace Tech episode. Give me a call back when you get this message. Hope to hear from you soon. I'll let you go first. I mean, I, I also think that one's fake, but I don't <laughs> trust my own judgment anymore, especially the back end of it sounded a little too staccato to me, but hmm. you know, I'm clearly not good at this. So whatever. I, I think it's fake, but Ooh. maybe I just don't trust anything anymore. I think it's real. And okay. the only thing that threw me was the um, the very beginning of it. There was something a little a little weird in the audio, but substantively, it sounded fine to me. Okay, I'm going to go with real. Kimberly's going with, go with fake. fake. Again. Okay. <laughs> Deemed myself a little bit. <laughs> well done, Kimberly. Yeah, there was like this weird, like like a weird. <laughs> sort of synthetic sounding something, but I couldn't put my, my finger on it. goes on. by so quickly, right? And if yeah. you imagine getting this on the phone or a voicemail or something like that, you, you know, and the phone line is distorting it, are you really going to notice those kinds of nuance? And we're listening so carefully right yeah. now. Yeah, we are. That's a really good point. We're like, okay. <laughs> um, okay. Let's play number three and see who, uh, this is the tiebreaker, I guess. Mm. Hey. It's me. Hope you're well. So I'm actually in D.C. this week while I'm on vacation and wanted to see if you're around and maybe grab lunch. Give me a call back. Wow, that's hard. <laughs> you know, one thing that occurs to me, these are very, like, there's nothing, you know, in terms of the substance of what she's talking about what, that would throw me about mm -hmm. that. Of course, you know, well, I don't live in D.C., but you do. So if she's coming down there, you know, it's not um, at all out of the ordinary for her to no, ask. No, it's you not. To she's just in Baltimore. It's not far away, and there's exactly. a lot to do in D.C. Cherry blossoms are coming up. Um, <laughs> yeah. So all uh, we have to go on is the tech. <laughs> yes, all we have to go on is our own ears. I, I'm going to go three for three and say that this one is also fake because I feel like it's a little too low energy for Stephanie. Hmm. I'm going to go with real just to <laughs> keep it interesting. Let's keep it interesting. <laughs> Someone's got to emerge victorious here. Mm. For Lily like Adams. <laughs> 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 but look, this is the point, right? We yeah. are professionals at audio. We know this person well, and we still are unable to figure this out without, you know, it causing us great distress, right? Right. So I think that tells us just how good this tech is and how hard it is to know what's real and what's fake. Yeah. And if you had uh, as much confidence as I did going into that test, well, <laughs> that should take <laughs> care of zero that. confidence going in. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to Stephanie, the real AI, the real and the AI Stephanie Hughes, as well as my guest, Kimberly Adams. Really nice to have you here. Thanks, Lily. All right. And we'll be doing this again very soon. To all of our viewers at home, we thank you for being with us for this very first episode of Decoding Democracy. If you have stories to share, by the way, we would love it if you could email them to us. Anything on this topic, we're at mptech at marketplace.org. Um, and as I mentioned a second ago, new episodes of Decoding Democracy are going to be dropping here on YouTube bi-weekly on Tuesdays. So please like, please subscribe. We are at Marketplace APM. And um, we can't wait to keep digging in deeper and deeper into this issue. Daniel Shin produced this episode, and I am your host, Lily Dramali.